Hello, and welcome to chapter two of episode nine. On the last episode you saw, we discussed the concept behind hip and valley rafters. On this chapter, we will discuss how to mark hip and valley rafters. Now, remember on the first episode when I showed you how to mark your plumb line, bird's mouth, and tail on the common rafter? Flashback. That's what we're gonna do with our hip and valley rafters too. Now before we get into that, let me show you another trick on your speed square. Now, do you see these numbers under the word hip and val? These numbers are the numbers for the rises of our pitch measurements for our hip and valley rafters. Now just remember that these numbers go over 17 instead of 12 this time. About now, you should have calculated the, your hip and valley rafter length by using the Pythagorean theorem or a framing square, which I will show you on another episode. But for my doghouse, I found my hip and valley length to be 46 and 15 sixteenths inches. Now let's talk about how to mark your first plumb line. The first plumb line, like last time, goes against the ridge board. But now there are two types for hip and valley rafters. There's the type in which the ridges or common rafters make a T-shape and you will have to cut the rafter into a point also known as a double cheek cut. The other is when it's just the ridge board and you would cut the rafter into something called a single cheek cut. But how would you make sure that your rafter will fit up against the ridge board? I mean, after all, we just calculated the length of the rafter. We didn't account for the ridge board. So what that means is that you have to shorten your rafter to one half the 45 degree thickness of your ridge board, which is one and one sixteenths usually. So subtracting by this measurement will ensure us that the rafter will fit up against the ridge. So my true measurement from the ridge to the bird's mouth is 45 and 7 eighths inches. So here's the procedure for cutting a single cheek cut for our first plumb line. Here we go. So first, figure out what your pitch is for your roof. Since I'm doing an 11 on 12 pitch for my common rafters, I will do 11 on 17 for my hip rafters. Now take your speed square and pivot until that number 11 under the hip valve is lined up with the edge of our board right here. And then we mark it. Next, we measure from this plumb line um, one and one sixteenth inches to the right to shorten it to adjust for the ridge board, remember? So what you do is you take like a framing square or a ruler and uh, you put it up against the line then you make a mark to, as to where the line is supposed to be. Then we take our speed square again and line up that same 11 and put it over the point that we just made. And then we trace the line again. So next, we mark a straight line from where our second plumb line is. Then the next thing we do is we try to draw a line down the middle of uh, this top edge. So what we do is we take our speed square and uh, there's a little groove right here on the three quarter mark. We put our pencil on that groove and then we go down. And there's the center line for the top of our board right here. And the reason why we do three quarters is because it's the halfway point for this thickness. Then the next thing we do is that we have to flip it over again. And from our second plumb line, we go from it three quarters. So we take a ruler again and then we go three quarters away from it, right there. And then once again, we take our speed square and we pivot until that same 11 is on the edge of our board and then we draw our third plumb line. And then once again, we flip it over on the top again and then from our third plumb line, we draw a line to connect this point with the center point right there. So let's take our ruler and connect the two points. And 
So like, like that. Now, do you notice this uh, triangle right here? Now, if we know that this is 3 quarters inches right here, and this is 3 quarter inches right there, that means that this triangle is a 45 degree right triangle. How about that, folks? Okay, you are done with the first plumb line. Yay! Now make sure that when you do a single cheek cut on hip rafters, that you do a mirror image of what we did to another board just by doing the same process, but on the other side of the second board. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. So this one is the one that we just made, you see? And we did it on this side. Here's another board, you know, with the same angle and everything, but the markings were on the other side. So you see, it's a, just a mirror image. And that's what you're supposed to do if you want to do single cheek cuts on hip rafters. Now, if you want to do a double cheek cut, like say for a valley rafter, all you have to do is, you know, get to your third plumb line right there and just draw a square from it. Right? And then you draw a diagonal connecting this point to the center of that. So let me just do that quickly. And there you go. Now when you cut the plumb line, make sure that your circular saw is settled on the 45 degree mark and follow the third plumb line when you start to cut. Now we need to talk about how to make our bird's mouth and our tail. Now, the hip and valley rafters are different in those areas from the common rafter and also different from each other. So let's first do the hip rafter and then we'll do the valley rafter. All right, just to review, the bird's mouth is where the rafter has a 90 degree cut to fit on top of the wall. The tail is the part of the rafter that sticks past the wall. All right, so let's first talk about how to mark a hip rafter's bird's mouth. So let's do the procedures for the bird's mouth of the hip rafter. Here we go. Now when you measure your hip rafter to get the bird's mouth, Measure from the second plumb line. So here's the square line from the second plumb line. So measure from that point. So after you figured out where to place your bird's mouth, you get your common rafter. So here's my common rafter. And here's the bird's mouth of my common rafter. And what you do is you measure the height above the bird's mouth uh, plumb line. So I'll measure right here. It turns out to be two inches. So what you do, is after you figure that out, you take your speed square and once again, put it on that 11 as I'm doing. And um, <clears throat> you make your plumb line right there. And then you take uh, your ruler and then you measure down two inches. So here's two inches right here. And then the next thing that you do is you draw a perpendicular line to that mark right there. So like what you saw on the first episode, you see that dot on the line? You line it up like so again, and then you place it on that mark that we just made, and there you go. So from the plumb line that we just drew, we take our ruler again, and we measure three quarters to the left of it. So we take our ruler and we measure three quarters. So here's the three quarters from it, right there. And um, from that three quarter mark that we just made, uh, we draw a second plumb line, right there. So once again, line that 11 up, and there we go, just like that. And then um, you draw another perpendicular line to that line that we just drew. But before we uh, draw that perpendicular line again, uh, we measure down two inches just like last time. So here's the two inch mark of our second plumb line. And then once again, we take our speed square and we line it up just like before. And there we go. So yeah, you can either use this 
or the framing square end, you just draw a line perpendicular to both the lines, both the plumb lines. So here we go. And once you draw it to your second plumb line, go ahead and take your uh, ruler or framing square and go ahead and line it up and draw it to the first plumb line. Now when you cut your uh, bird's mouth, cut it on this line and the first plumb line. Now the reason why we had to do that special bird's mouth marking is because we have to drop our hip rafter. Now what are you talking about? Well, let me explain that a little bit. If we hadn't made the bird's mouth just like the common rafter, the plywood we would put on lighter would bump against the hip rafter instead of on top of it like it's supposed to be. So we need to cut more off to make it lower. So moving on from the bird's mouth, now we have to make the tail. Important note though, the length of the tail is different on a hip and valley rafter than it is on a common rafter, since they have less of a slope. So let's talk about how to find the length of the tail for hip and valley rafters. Now there's a way to do that with your framing square, but for right now let's just use ratios to figure out our hip and valley tail length. So for example, let's say we have a common rafter tail that is 15 inches long. Well that means that its run is 9 inches and its rise is 12 inches. So let's put that 9 inches run over our 12 inches unit run. So let's put 9 over 12. Well that is 3 fourths of a unit run. Now. That means, therefore, that the hip and valley rafters must have a three-fourths fraction of 17 inches. So that turns out to be 12 and three-quarters inches if we took three-fourths times 17. So substituting in, now we know the run of the hip rafter, which is 12 and three over fourths and the rise is still 12 inches. So if we use the Pythagorean theorem, we find that the hip and valley's tail's length is 17 and a half inches long, which is two and a half inches longer than the common rafter's tail. Now for my rafter, I found the tail's length to be five and a half inches. So marking the tail is very similar to marking the double cheek cut for our first plumb line cut except the fact that the tip points the other way. So let me show you how you make the tail of a hip rafter. So first you get to where the bird's mouth is and then you draw a square line on top of where the first plumb line is. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, and from the square line, we take our tape measure and we measure our rafters, uh, rafter tail's length. So for mine, it's going to be at around, let's see, five and a half as I said. So let me mark where that is. And from the mark that I just made, we take our speed square and we draw a square line on that. Now we flip it over again. And once again, we take our speed square and we pivot until that number 11 is once again on the edge of our board. And then we draw a plumb line where that square line is. Now, like before, we take our ruler and we go back three quarters of an inch. So let me go ahead and do that. So there's three quarters of an inch right there. And uh, just like before, we take our speed square, we pivot until that number 11 is once again flush with our edge. And then we draw our second plumb line. And then we flip it over once more. And uh, like before, we take, uh, we put our pencil on the three quarter mark on our speed square, and then we go down and there's our center point right there. 
So what we do is we go from the second plumb line to the center of that point right there and we draw a line. So let me get my ruler. Let me go ahead and do that. And, and then after that, we draw a square line from the second plumb line. We go across once again. And from this point right there, we take our ruler and we connect the dots. Ta-da! There's the point for our tail. And now we just go ahead and cut it. So we're done, right? No. To be continued again.